Hey guys, and welcome back to Teal House Farm. Today, we're gonna to talk about composting because I've received lots of questions over the last few months because people are starting to think about this as spring is coming around and they're like, gee, I'd love to have some compost for my garden next time around because I don't have any this year. How do I get started? It seems kind of confusing. And I'm gonna tell you right off the bat that composting is really very simple, okay? The confusing stuff, it just makes composting faster. It makes it a little bit more efficient. It also changes kind of the types of things that you can compost if you're wanting to use the compost in something like a vegetable garden. Anything organic will naturally biodegrade when it is exposed to water, heat, sunlight, okay? You could take vegetable scraps and throw them in a beekeeping pile outside the back window of your kitchen and eventually it would break back down into dirt. That is composting, technically. Now, there's some problems with just doing it that way, right? I mean, it's going to smell, okay? You're probably going to attract wildlife, and it doesn't look very good, okay? And so that's where we get these composting systems that you can read about online. We're trying to make sure that it doesn't stink. We're trying to keep rodents or wildlife or cats and dogs from digging in your pile. And... We are also trying to make it look somewhat contained and hopefully help it compost faster so you can get from scraps to new dirt in a shorter amount of time. This is my very non-aesthetically pleasing compost pile, but it doesn't matter if it's not good looking. It matters if it does its job. It's keeping things contained. Check. It doesn't smell. I know you can't smell it. I can't smell it either, right? <laughs> Nothing and it's going to help break down things a little bit faster because it's layered. Today, I'm going to build a new compost pile. I'm gonna take you along for the ride to show you how I do it. I just want you to know that composting is, this, is just, we're trying to get things to biodegrade. We're trying to make it faster and we're trying to make it safer. Now, there is no danger in just composting vegetable scraps and yard waste in a pile in your backyard, okay? Because viruses are not going to exist in, you know, apple peels. But when we start getting into wanting to compost more things, like composting uh, meat scraps, or even as far as human manure composting, composting human waste, we've composted diapers before, believe it or not. Um, then you really have to get into that nitty, nitty gritty. And that's when you need to start Googling and reading and really understanding the science because you have to make sure your compost pile gets hot enough to even kill a virus, okay, or dangerous bacteria. Today, we're gonna to build just a very simple compost. The goal of this is to show you that composting is not tricky, okay? And just some very simple planning. You can have a compost pile that will um, decompose your vegetable scraps and your yard waste and things like that and um, it can be contained, it will be not smelly, and we will be able to keep rodents out. Now, as I showed you before, my last compost pile is ugly, okay? When we built this compost pile, I didn't have any money to spend on anything. I used old chicken wire, I used bent tea posts, just whatever I could to keep it contained. But it still worked fine, even though it's not lovely, okay? Today, we have some better resources available. I have a bunch of untreated pallets I'm going to use. I have new tea posts, so everything will be straight. So it's gonna look better. But I want you to know that if you need to just stick four tea posts in the ground and wrap it with chicken wire, that's gonna get you started. And whether you use chicken wire or pallets like I'm about to do, we're gonna follow the same system of filling our compost pile, no matter what our construction materials are. Do make sure if you're using any sort of wood construction material that it is non-treated, you don't want those treated chemicals leaching into your compost pile, because eventually, right, we hope to use this dirt in our gardens. First up, we're gonna go grab our materials. I have a pallet, untreated pallet pile in front of the barn and I've got tea posts inside the barn. I'm going to use a tea post, um, oh, I can't, it's a tea post fence pusher, hammer thing. If you don't have one of those, you just use a regular hammer. It's just gonna take longer, but something that we can pound the tea posts into the ground with, um, but that's all we need. So four tea posts, four pallets, and um, we need something to bang the tea posts into the ground with. I'm not quite strong enough, so I'm going to haul these using the kids' wagon. And if you think to yourself, there's no way this is actually going to work, well, you would be exactly right. Tried to defy the law of physics, couldn't quite do it, but at least I got them closer to the pile, and now we'll just roll them the rest of the way so I can get them down there. 
Okay, I've got two sides balanced in this frame. Now you do not need this on the bottom. This is a frame. This used to be, or was supposed to be a Hugel culture, dug into the ground type raised bed that we started it like right when we moved here seven years ago and then did all this work and discovered we could not afford to fill it. So we just left it. And now it is the base for my two, one two-sided compost system. Um, you do not need this, okay? All it's doing is balancing those up. So if you don't have that, you would put your T-post in first, get a friend to help you, and then thread your T-posts through here, okay? But because I have this to help balance it up, I can lay this in first, and then I'm just gonna bang the T-posts down, and I don't need a friend to help me. So I guess this is my helpful friend. Again, you do not need this base on the bottom. Okay, I have left the fourth wall off for right now to make it easier to start the pile. Because to start the pile, we need a base layer. Um, you need anything that would be considered what they call your browns. So that's dead yard waste, like, like dead leaves, like brown leaves. Or we're going to use some straw and some really old junk hay. Um, grass clippings, I believe are not technically browns because they're still fresh. So they're actually greens, which is like the same as the lettuce scraps you're gonna throw in here. So you need dead, dead things. Uh, there's a little piece of cardboard down there too, just because I had it, but we're gonna cover this with probably about five inches worth of straw. We're just gonna stack it up here. And this is important. Okay, and so I need to make sure I have a barrier between everything and the ground. So as things, just a second, babe, as things leach down, it's going to suck up that leaching material and provide a nice, like, wet towel base kind of thing, if that makes sense. This is an old hay storage shed we made, and the hay in here is very, very old. I think three or four years old. I used it then as a greenhouse, and the hay became the floor of the greenhouse, but is now decomposed as a part to the point the floor is very unsteady so I'm clearing it all out so we're going to use this hay to be the base of our compost this hay is so old I basically can't pick it up because it's just the string is just falling apart so we shove it through the door and then we just pick it up in chunks and bring it over to the compost pile and we're going to throw it in there and then we're going to use our feet and our hands just kind of kick it around and spread it down flat make sure we get it all in the corners and such it helps if you make a little bit of a well in the middle um, so it's built up more on the sides. Then we're going to go inside and get our bucket. We collect compost in a big five gallon bucket with a tight lid so it doesn't smell. We can create quite a bit just in peels and such with all the kids. They love bananas. That's probably 50% of my compost pile. We dump it in the middle, the center of the pile, and then we're gonna go ahead and cover that part up with more hay. This helps discourage rodents from digging in there and finding things and also helps it to compost faster. It's called a lasagna method because we are basically building a lasagna with hay and waste. I'm gonna close up this side now. You don't need a video of me doing that. I'm just gonna put the other pallet this way and then we got three pallet sides and I'm using that chicken wire from the old one as the last side. So it makes a square. Y you can do the math. That's it. So we're going to do it like a lasagna. We fill up our big five gallon bucket in the kitchen with compostable items. And then we dump them in here. We cover it back up with some sort of yard waste. Um, every time if you can. If you can every time, it'll be okay. Just remember if it's not covered, it's going to start to smell. And depending where it is or where you live, there might be a problem. Now, there are compost bins you can buy. You can make compost in a large trash can. Um, those methods are best for people who live places where you'll get in trouble for an ugly compost pile. You do not have to have those if you have the space to compost outside like we do. Those are just really for aesthetics. Some of them do make it go a little bit faster because they'll generate more heat because they're black. But really, at the end of the day, like I said at the beginning, everything biodegrades eventually, okay? composting techniques just make it happen faster and it can make it happen more safely for things that could potentially carry harmful viruses or bacteria. Now I'm not going to go into detail about how we get the compost up to temperature for composting things like meat in this video. That's not what this video is about. Okay this method you really don't have to worry about that stuff unless you're starting to compost meat 
or human waste. And you can Google a million videos about that. Maybe we'll do one later, but that's not what we're talking about. This method is if you have vegetable scraps, compostable paper products, cardboard, things like that, toilet paper tubes, you put them in here, you layer it like lasagna. My five gallon bucket, my dead yard waste. Okay, up, 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 up. We do this for a year and then we do what's called close the compost pile, which just means I put a really thick layer of yard waste on top and I leave it alone for a year. I do not turn my compost. Turning your compost will make it break down faster. It's eventually going to break down. Um, whether or not you turn it, it's just again, how fast you want it to turn into dirt. I'm not in a hurry. So I don't turn it, I just close it up. I let it sit for a year, sometimes two years, depending what kind of composting I'm doing and then it's ready to be used. I hope this is helpful. I hope this is encouraging, encourages you to get out there and give it a shot and not be overwhelmed by all the options out there. You really, I won't say you can't do it wrong because if you're trying to compost human waste, you're not following the rules with how hot to get that pile. You and you, then you put that in your garden, you could make somebody really sick, okay? I'm gonna be honest. But if you're just trying to reduce your waste output, what you're sending to a landfill and biodegrade stuff at home faster in a non-smelly, somewhat aesthetically pleasing way, you really can't do that wrong. So thanks so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time.